Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Now you are going to forget about yourself for the next five minutes. Lord, tonight as we come into your presence, we are fully aware that the rain has already begun to fall. And now our confidence is steadfast because the sound of the abundance of rain that we heard from afar off and when we proclaimed it we did not lie because indeed you were steaming indeed you were brewing something in the spirit which it has pleased you to begin to release and to let loose we pray tonight oh god that every heart every every well Every heart of expectation that is raised before you today, we ask that you feel in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let no one leave this place without a literal encounter with the realm of reality. That realm wherein there is no lack. That realm where sustenance is by the integrity of God. That everyone might taste and touch and testify that in you there is no end because there is no beginning in you. Thank you, Father. Somebody just worship him. Worship. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Shella Mandala Baskadeba. We give you the praise and the glory. The great God, the eternal King, the one that sits in the circles of the earth, that proclaims his counsel from a thousand generations. And when demons rise, when men rise, to frustrate his counsel, he comes to pass anyway. The one that speaketh and he cometh to pass, it is you that we call tonight. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We worship your holy name. How I long for in your name every day. Your name is the same. Oh, Lord, calling your name every day. Every day, your name is the same. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, you may be seated for a moment. Is quite worthy of note when we see the word transformation in the New Testament transformation God says be not conformed to this word but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and the Bible also says that the devil has transformed himself to an angel of light if God requires that we should be transformed and God also reveals that the devil has capacity to transform himself. I don't know whether that has ever bothered you before. The God said be transformed. And the devil too has the ability to transform himself. Then I went into further research and discovered. That when God 
speaks about the need for us to be transformed the Greek word that was used is a word metaschizomato which talks about a transformation that derives from within when uh, the devil was said to have the power to transform himself the word that was used was metamorpho which is an external transformation it is possible as a christian for you to initiate a kind of transformation maybe you decide those days we decided that will not shake sisters it will increase your level of holiness uh, with there was a kind of regalia that we used to put on which depicted our conviction but all of that was external we still had all the symptoms of malice and all the symptoms of anger rooted within our hearts but we had a way to project ourselves such that the religious mind appeals to what we display as though we had something that was original then in my studies i came to re realize that chinese monks those japanese monks had the power of discipline much more than any set of people and they were able to bring themselves under some form of discipline not because they had the holy spirit many of them stayed in the monasteries for several years no woman no wife nothing just reading the scrolls and praying and when they come out they are under strict regulations as to how their conduct should be expressed and many live like that and that's their definition of perfection when by an act of your will you can redo the appetite of the soul and the body all of that is external and it has no value before god but the transformation that we speak of in the new testament is that which the holy spirit orchestrates is deep seated within your inner membrane it's like a metabolic reaction where god supplies his ability to furnish a function in replacement of the flesh a replacement of the ability of your will so much so that you begin to live by the help and the grace of God and your life begins to project and advertise God that's the story of the Christian faith and I believe that after this conference we will have a shift in our experience with God in the name of Jesus Christ Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 I want to read from verse 1 and 2 we have a long journey to embark upon it said therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a, a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking on to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God verse 1 of hebrews chapter 12 begins to reveal a scenario a state a stadium like scenario it's as if some athletes are running and there are several spectators sitting in the grandstands watching the activity in the main bowl he is now saying to us that just in case you will not adjust yourself in this race because of yourself it is necessary for you to understand that we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses and in this scripture God was actually making reference not just to people in our generation he wasn't just talking about people in our day and our time but he's talking about people that have lived through the ages 
that there is an example of somebody in heaven right now that is experiencing that same situation that you experienced that you fell there's somebody right now in heaven that has experienced the same thing and he has succeeded and he's standing in the grandstands looking upon you and it happens to be that in a relay race no man is crowned until the last runner finishes to run and it happens to be that the church through the ages have been running a relay from one generation to another generation just in case somebody said my own problem is woman problem then in the grandstands we have joseph that has run his own race he has secured a place of favor with god by virtue of the fact that he conquered the attempts of the enemy when he was tempted in that area and he's standing as a spectator and it happens to be that he cannot be crowned until you finish running and then when you get to the same place that he got a medal for that he, he has he has he has qualified for uh, you now complain and say i have a woman problem and so paul is telling us here that seeing that we are encompassed with a mighty cloud of witnesses he now gives us a suggestion as to how we should run our race can we look upon it hallelujah now you see it's so easy for you to think that you are the first christian and that the challenges that you are going through are original challenges that nobody has ever experienced before in fact if the devil wants to um move you in the way of deception he makes you believe that your situation is an isolated case that is separated from all of humanity and that god needs to come and study your case afresh in order for him to diagnose it and recommend three or four approaches to bringing you out of that trouble he's saying now that since this is the reality since this is the situation that we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses then he begins to recommend to us how to accurately run our race with and with the understanding that you are not the one that is having this experience for the first time people that have had it people that have conquered people that are sitting now that cannot be crowned because you are still running say arm yourself with this understanding when you hit the track that someone ran through this track and he survived someone moved through this way and he made it and now i'm running this this is not a new race he says let us lay aside every weight Second day now says, let's lay aside every sin that easily has the propensity and the capacity to ensnare us. I'm talking about sins that we have developed an emotion around. You see, uh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The Bible speaking concerning Moses revealed to us that moses despised the pleasure of egypt the pleasure of sin when we talk pleasure it is something that brings satisfaction and ventilation to the soul eventually and when somebody begins to walk in a particular direction of pleasure the that pleasure has a capacity to ensnare that individual from the standpoint of his soul by reason of the fact that he has submitted himself to that kind of pleasure and so if he wants to rise up one day and say i want to stop he he will discover that his will does not have the authority to bring an abrupt change in the direction of his life because he has enjoyed that pleasure to a point that his emotions have been built around it and if he's going to cut it off it's as if he's cutting his hand off hallelujah 
so when somebody has built some form of emotional feelings around a particular error that sin that error will easily ensnare him because he has an emotion built around it hallelujah he has an emotion what built around it so the possibility of him being ensnared by it exists and that's why the devil may not need to explore a new ground in in crystallizing a way of tempting you because he has the advantage of experience he knows the weaknesses of your grandfather he knows the weaknesses of your father and it's most likely according to him that if he transports the same weaknesses he may get the same premise of acceptance and the bible says that we need to consciously spot out those areas you are not with me <laughs> jesus he said we need to consciously spot out those areas that we have a higher propensity to be ensnared by the devil and that nobody will do for you that you will do by yourself you will rise up one day take a pen and say i lie yes and i built an emotion around this line anytime i lie and i convince the people i feel good inside he said that kind of one you will be easily ensnared and, and if you look at it critically you might find out that you are not the first one that has strength along that area it may be something running through the lines and the insufficiencies of your ancestral line have been able to gain mastery over you and they are projecting through you at that point in time and so he says here amen weights we need to identify weights in our lives there are several times like that when we preach the gospel and say okay now we are going to fast there are some people that no matter how you preach they cannot fast because they have built a philosophy around that area and whenever you introduce the subject of fasting it's a weight it's very heavy to carry we cannot accommodate it within the context of our philosophy i'm i'm so lean and if you bring fasting into this equation it might tamper with my configuration it might tamper with my delicate balance you know many times like that we actually um experience or manifest a christianity of precaution okay uh, let's not go too far because if we get too far we might run into some form of crisis uh, this fasting we are doing like this whenever you see that there's an area that your flesh is strong and is consistent in resisting you from advancements and indication of the fact that you have a weight along that line and the bible says that in view of the fact that we are surrounded with a mighty cloud of witnesses you need to identify what weight and what scenes that your emotions have been built around that have the propensity and capacity to ensnare you because you see you cannot run if these two things are not clearly spelled out the truth of the matter is this if we if a man falls into temptation the truth is according to the bible he likes it yes he has accommodated it in his soul he he loves it mm. because it takes nine months for you to produce a child and the bible says when sin is conceived that means there's a gestation period you actually loved it and that's why he was able to build for the full-blown period of the gestation period before he found expression when it was looming within your soul as a lust you loved the way it felt when that loss came and that's why you gave it protection you gave it you gave it first class security so that nothing will puncture it because you have built an emotion around that and when you try to use your will to quench it you just discover that at that point in time it has gained so much momentum within the corridors of your emotion that your will cannot just wake up all of a sudden to cut it out but he said just in case you still want to finish the race because there are several guys that started up well with without an intention to finish in the first place and those are the guys that plan to go with their baggages they plan the race with an intention to run with weight and 
with snares but he says seeing that we are encompassed with a great cloud of witnesses it is wise for you to identify the ways and for you also to identify that sin that has the capacity to ensnare you most easily and i need to tell you when you have spotted out that sin and you have begun to deal with it stay behind that goal post for your lifetime yeah because he has the ability to resurrect if you are not there you become careless at any point in time you will see that the old sins will begin to gain momentum again so the fact that you have received deliverance from a particular thing doesn't mean that that deliverance is permanent except you depend on god the way you depended on him the first time to receive that de dependence that dependence is infused into your lifestyle and you maintain it that's the only way you can live beyond that particular infirmity there's no way you can run this race without a consciousness of the weights the consciousness of the sin that has the propensity to easily ensnare you one of the things i battled with for a long time even when i began to preach the gospel was lying lying hallelujah anytime i i stop praying i stop studying and i i just live loose for a while the symptoms will come again hallelujah oh you're not with me i've i've not started speaking hard things yet this one hallelujah is it that many people lie here and their things their weights you have been carrying with with we barrow you have been ferrying it along all these years and so when you know you know when you are touching the dead you have been moving things you are not sincere to yourself let me tell you i've seen several christians i've watched them watch their infirmities and they have gallantly carried it for five years for years you don't know if you see eternity if you see from that realm you will see how you have cheated yourself i pray god will help us see it because if you are not looking at the right things you cannot run effectively you will start protecting things that you should kill you will be carrying baggages that you should drop and your life will not strike any chord in the realm are you still with me now so he recommends to us the formula for running now you see i can't run so fast now there are weights that you need to draw i don't know whether this has ever happened to you maybe god smuggled himself into your bedroom and just requested for of you give me your night i want to talk to you every now then you just discover that there's a weight there you actually desire to stay and to commune with him and the first night you tried it he opened you up to great and mighty things that you never knew and you wanted to maintain it only for you to discover that there was a weight you didn't draw and the race was demanding another level of frequency another pattern that that you never knew that that was a weight all, all along until the weight the race came to a curve I, get, I don't know I was an athlete those days you know that part of the field that is a curve where the goalpost is that's where overtaking takes place you won't know who is ahead and who is behind until the curve has been fully negotiated there are several times in your race that you you advance through that curve are you with me now when you advance through that curve that's when we'll know whether you had a weight or not because on that curve as you negotiate that curve suddenly you just find out that you are retarding so much activity on your legs but the weight is too much mm. it's not easy to look through jesus because the devil had already put several things installed and established several things in your life that will make it impossible for you to look to jesus he had already carefully and craftily 
um, um, put weight. Although he didn't do that without your help, you helped him in the process of administering and keeping weights in place. Hallelujah. You can be moving as a mighty evangelist, preaching the gospel with power until Jesus comes to you one night and says, Give me this thing. That's when you will know that you had a weight all along. But because the level of your race did not demand that instruction that he was putting forth at that point in time, you never knew you had a weight. Should I tell you that in this, in the race, you can be running without the consciousness of any weight until a time comes when the Lord gives another instruction. That's where people fail. It. That's where people's level of pace with God begins to break. And they don't keep pace any longer with the Holy Spirit because that instruction revealed the presence of a weight. And they were not willing to put the weight down. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? I went to work early in the morning, came back from work. We had a wonderful service here. The Holy Spirit overtook us in the meeting and we drank a, a little more than uh, the normal time. Then there was so much counseling and I went back home and I, I was feeling so much peace in my spirit that yes, I serve God today. And I finished eating and just hit the bed and the voice came and said, All right. Then I tried my bones and I found out there was a weight. <laughs> I tried the backbone that I was walking with weights all along. Meanwhile, every instruction of God to travel with an accompaniment of grace to bring it to pass. And before God said it, He had to release the grace. But at any point in time where you cannot synchronize with grace to produce an expression which is within the context of God's expectation is an indication of the fact that what? And the devil can put a weight around your life that will busy you for 30 years. And for 30 years, you never moved in your race with God because a weight pegged you and so much activity, but your life never moved because you were held back and held down by a weight. And I tell you the truth, you, the devil did not single-handedly bring the weight. You cooperated with him to establish it in your life and to gain dominion of your soul. Are you still ready to run? Please help me ask your neighbor. Are you still ready to run? The reason why we need to deal with the weight first and deal with the ensnarements first is because this race is a different race in the earthly race you look at the finish mark is that not so and in order for you to look at the finish mark you need to look away from the crowd you might be given you know giant strides and you are gassing off and you are increasing the margin between you and the next man behind you and the crowd begins to to yell begins to yell you are not permitted to look by the side you you might be distracted you might see your wife ah! and it will affect your pace so the discipline of the athlete requires that you keep pace look at the finish line but this race is a different time i should deal with the weights and deal with everything that will not make you effective you don't look at the finish line you look at jesus that's the difference between the natural race and this race I hope you understand that Jesus is the syllabus for a spiritual experience and if your eyes are not fixed on him you will accept a position in the spirit that is not accurately the perspective of Jesus and when Jesus appeared in the book of Revelation chapter 1 you will notice something the Bible says that he his, his eyes were like flames of fire all right that means that any work that you have done that is not within the scope of Jesus's perspective will burn with fire if it's not within range not within perspective if that work was not done within the context of the perspective of Jesus it will come under judgment and it will burn 
it is possible if you are not looking at Jesus and looking on to Jesus you will accept a crescendo which is not God's end you, you, you say alright I've made some effort so God, God should be glad God will only be pleased if the template of your life synchronizes with the example that Jesus gave you don't get it oh my God like I heard a fellowship leader say that our fellowship is compared to other fellowships is the spiritual fellowship on this campus I say you are backslidden because you don't compare your fellowship to fellowship you compare it to the Bible and I brought the scriptures let's do some what is the definition of apostolic fellowship and when we looked at apostolic fellowship and compared to the fellowship that he was the president we saw that it was a club you know even in a club as 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 rowdy as it may look there are rules there too rules <laughs> hallelujah one notorious sinner died and because his brother was a high-ranking politician he came to the pastor and said pastor for preaching in my brother's burial you will earn three hundred thousand but the only way you will earn it is that in your sermon say that my brother was a saint And you earn it and that time that pastor had a financial need and he took the offer and preached and preached and preached and called the name of a notorious sinner and said compared to that sinner this man says sin <laughs> you see <laughs> we have different references you can be making reference to your neighbor and say yeah compared to that guy i'm good and you'll be feeling good but according to scripture jesus is the benchmark so when you run you look upon him and if you lose sight of him it means that a weight held you mm. just in case you didn't you 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 produce something that doesn't synchronize with him a snare held you down and so he said let's deal with weights and deal with snares before we qualify to look on to jesus have you ever dealt with a weakness before in prayer and god supplied grace and you went before it that which was a weight suddenly you went be beyond the weight because something from heaven was released into your life and from the standpoint of that energy you were able to go beyond that limitation of your humanity and something about you that you know was not from you just came and overwhelmed you and took you beyond the scope and the limits and, and your life manifested an attribute that was in Christ's life every time we go beyond the weights Christ is revealed hallelujah so our finish line is where Jesus and that's why we need to set our eyes on it and we need to look away from every other distraction so that our desire in this race will be to attain to the perfection that was revealed in Christ Jesus during the time of his incarnation are you with me now and I need to put a balance to that quickly there's a balance I need to add Because somebody will leave this place and say, all right, the pastor said we should imitate Jesus. I'm not saying imitate Jesus. I'm saying that our destiny to become like Jesus. If you are trying to imitate Jesus, you are trying to do it from the standpoint of your will. This is what Jesus would have done. You know, have you heard all those sermons before? It's, it's an error. This is what Jesus would have done if it were if he were here. So you constrain yourself to be that. That is metamorpho. It was an external constraint by the pressure of your will to do something which was not within the context of your reality. And if you operate like that tomorrow in that issue, 
you will still behave like a canal man because they you wanted to impress people that's why you did that it means you imitated jesus so there was no transformation that came from inside it was something you organized by your will do you get it or you don't get it let me move a little more so that you will understand it according to paul the story of the christian life from the standpoint of galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is one statement that's a summary of the entire christian life it's no longer i that lives but it's christ that lives in me now you see in order for that to become a reality you need to understand that that man by the workings of the cross have been brought to a point where he doesn't look to his natural endowments to furnish the expectations of god but he has found an inroad with god and he has found the dwelling place of grace and he has found how to lean on god for the supply of that grace so that when that grace begins to manifest the life of christ through him it is not him doing it but it's christ doing it through him by his grace and so that man has not just been changed but that man has been exchanged that's the story of the christian life because when we say becoming like jesus you will think that you are trying to use your will to do something that's where we miss it that's not the journey i came to take us to now it's a journey of life where the transformation will be taking place on your inside in little little doses and fragments but you'll be seeing victory you'll be seeing that something is being exchanged here you'll be seeing that my former weaknesses don't have a say in my life anymore because something has overtaken those weaknesses i've gone beyond my will to fixing this problem i'm connected to the support of god and that support of god has taken me beyond the limitations of my humanity that's different from trying to become something you get it oh you're not with me can we move gradually because in the study of the book of john i found out 12 things in the life of jesus that is a challenge for us Twelve things. Twelve things you cannot ignore. If it is true that we are looking unto Jesus, you must have seen those things. As we are looking at the life of Jesus, we are seeing how the maturity of the God life finds expression. And that becomes a basis for us to go to God in prayer. That God will supply the grace. Just in case we are deficient with respect to the example of Jesus. And then the grace of God will take us beyond the limitations of our humanity and manifest through us something that is beyond us. Are you with me? All right, let's go. John chapter 14, as we start. Don't be too fast. There are several of us that we have to drop some weights here so that the passage into this race will become lightened. I've seen people that speak in tongues but they carry malice on the inside. I've seen people that speak in tongues but there's a weight of pride. And when you commit an obvious blunder, it's so difficult for you to say, You are carrying a weight. And because of your reluctance to release yourself the devil will stand by you to resist you hallelujah instead of you say sorry i lied i lied i lied one of my son he was supposed to travel to united states and the first time he went there he told so many lies so that he would get a visa and you know it's as if those people have the gift of discernment of spirit and they denied him a visa then he now gave his life to christ and um, joined a mission agency that's where i met him because i was invited to preach in their university it's a mission university and when the words came, the young man came to me. 
well the lord helped us it was in that meeting while i was lecturing that i saw him standing before a ship and i said oh you're about to travel bro and he came to me and told me how that he went for visa and lied so the next time he went for the visa interview he told them i lied the woman said you lied i lied you me and that's how he got visa <laughs> he was willing to show his wounds when jesus was resurrected and Thomas was contesting the resurrection. What did he do? He showed the wounds. See the place. And just in case it's so difficult for you to accept, I did wrong. And you stay in your palace. It's a weight. And the weight has brought about a kind of blindness such that you are no longer conscious of the fact that there are a host of witnesses you are not conscious of it again you have seen what you are perceiving is as if you are the only one running meanwhile you are hindering people from being crowned go with me to the book of john john 14. amen John 14. I want you to see something quickly. John 14. It's a long journey. Um, John 14. Are you with me? Please follow me carefully. John 14, verse 10. Okay? In John chapter 14 verse 10 and 11 Jesus is speaking he said do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me the words that I speak to you I do not speak of my own authority but the father who dwells in, in me does the works believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves in the example of Jesus is what you have not for us to acknowledge a reality amen we will base all our study on the book of John we will not go beyond John we we'll just Let's stay in John. Because John was the book that spoke about the fact that Jesus existed before he came into this world. John was the book that revealed that Jesus had a different kind of life. John was the book that revealed that Jesus, the word, became flesh. That means he put on humanity and in the history of God, that's the first time that event is taking place. So he was... His humanity was possessed with divinity. Alright? And he was manifesting divinity through human virtues. You are going to see the difference between you and Jesus. Are you with me? The excellent greatness of God's glory. The express image of God's person was communicated to Jesus. In Jesus, God was defined. God was expressed. God gained personality that was perceptible to the natural man he forms the sum total of the expression of God that can take place to the vessel of man are you with me now and we need to see the things that gave him that status and through his words we find the secrets of his life the first secret of his life is that he was co inheriting in the Father. Or should I say, yes, co inheriting with the Father. 
the meaning of this is that he was dwelling in the father and at the same time the father was dwelling in him because he was dwelling in the father and the father was dwelling in him at the same time there were several consequences that derived from that reality first consequence was that on the account of the fact that he was dwelling in the father and that the father was also dwelling in him the words that he was speaking was not his own words they were what oh you are not with me this my class is not is not following me today he was dwelling in the father and i will need you to understand don't try to use your mind to understand this dimension because it's only applicable in the spirit realm all right so he was dwelling the father and the father was dwelling in him can we explain that existence the, he was living and expressing the father in this coherent dimension he was depending on the father and the father was depending on him you know that the father had had a limitation that jesus was supplying the father was not manifested in the natural realm all right so in the incarnation jesus had a body and in order for the father to be expressed the father had to what possess that body is that not so and the father had to supply his reality into jesus bountifully so that jesus will express his reality are you seeing that because of that limitation that the father had he had to depend on jesus to express him you get it and also jesus had to depend on the father to reinforce him to energize him to empower him it was somewhat the best physical definition of this existence is an existence of covenant and a covenant is something that is caught by two partners it has obligations it has consequences for defaulting and a covenant is established because one partner has strength in the area that the other partner has weakness and the other partner has strength in the area that this partner has weakness so they have to bind themselves with an oath that will keep them consistently together so that in the area of this person's weakness this person will stand out and two of them will unite as though they were one man one entity now so in co-inheriting in the father co-inheriting in him and him also dwelling in the father it produced a reality where jesus could not but depend absolutely on the father secondly it produced a reality where if jesus everything jesus was expressing was the father and that was why there was no need for the father to appear again because thomas said why not show us the father you have been speaking the father the father all this while source and we will be satisfied and jesus said i've been with you all this while and you have not known me because the father was dwelling right inside of him the father was the one speaking the things he was uttering the father was the one doing the works that he was doing are you with me now the father was speaking through him the father was what doing the miracles doing the signs but he had to yield to the father he had to know what the father was doing in the spirit realm so that he would do the same thing in the natural he will act it out and the father will supply the strength for him to do that which he's doing in the spirit realm for him to do it and conduct it in the natural realm. he was co-inheriting with the father when you begin to miss it this way if you don't get these little little principles you will not be able to manifest god in his full colors because if we are going to manifest god his dominion must be seen 
His righteousness must be seen. His holiness must be seen. His power must be seen. You know, when we started teaching the people that the fruit of the Spirit is better than the gift of the Spirit, you know that time. We were just trying to blind an aspect of God from being manifested. Meanwhile, Jesus, the Bible reveals that he was the brightness of God's glory and the express image of God's person. That means in Jesus, no attribute of God was obscured. He manifested all these dimensions of God's spectrum. He did not dichotomize and say, this aspect is good, that aspect is good. If it is of God, then it's supposed to be manifested. And Jesus manifested everything. He's the, he's, he's the case study. He's the syllabus of holiness. Yet, he's the syllabus of power. He's the syllabus of humility. Yes, it's the syllabus of authority. He manifested every dimension of God. And it's also necessary for you to note that Jesus also know, knew what to do when there was a money situation. He also knew what to do. <laughs> manifested everything. Because the Father dwelt in him and he was dwelling in the Father. He had to depend on the Father for supply of strength supply of ability supply of strategy supply of pattern and the father had to depend on him for him to express him faithfully so it was a partnership that existed and the strength of this reality this is what the picture and the example of jesus projects to us you get it now let's check first john chapter 4 verse 13 you are going to see your own picture You come to realize that as Jesus related with the Father, so we are supposed to relate with Christ. The Father was Jesus' life. And in the New Testament, Christ is our own life. Now, anybody with me in the book of 1 John 4? Have you reached there? If you are there, say Amen. amen. In 1 John chapter 4, I want to read from verse number 13. He said, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. It means that we co inherit with him. Just as he co inherited with the Father, we also what? Co inherit. He dwells in us and we what? Oh, you are not with me. See, it's difficult to understand this life if you don't follow. There are several things about our compatibility with Christ that I've never heard it taught in the body of Christ till I grew to this age. But it's in the Bible. It means that the devil is doing something deliberate to remove our gaze from the man. From the way he lived his life. From the quality of life. The excellency of his manifestation. And the Bible says, by this we know that we dwell in him and him in us. Because he has given us of his spirit. So the proof that we dwell in him and that he also dwells in us is that the spirit of God right now resides in us. And that means that if we are going to leave Christ, I hope you understand, that's our syllabus. That's our call. Because Paul said for me to leave is Christ. And I need you to understand that there's another option. You can either leave Christ. Leave from the support of Christ. Leave from the reinforcement that comes from Christ. Leave from the ability that comes from Christ. Leave from the grace that comes from Christ. Or you can leave from your flesh. You can leave from your self-life. Are you with me now? If every situation that happens around your life is seeking to attract attention attract a response and your capacity to respond is from two dimensions you can either respond from the spirit or respond from the flesh just like i said if i give you a slap what? it triggers a response something wants to respond and as i explained in the preparative classes how that and why that the flesh is louder most of the times than the voice of the spirit because 
uh, one of the differences between we and Christ is that uh, we had we lived with from the resources of our soul for a long time before we got born again so our soul life and our flesh is older it's more established in our universe than spirit life and you need to do something deliberately and consciously to suppress that flesh life and to promote spirit life consciously deliberately so that you can grow within the stipulated pattern revealed in scripture because this was the template of Christ's growth he grew in spirit he grew in what stature can you see that the spirit was given preeminence oh you are not with me spirit life was given preeminence so that one should grow big and large and deep and then your soul should take a cue from that point so that at every point in time your soul will be submitted to your recreated spirit receiving instructions from your recreated spirit yielding to your recreated spirit but that is not always the case with us because the soul life has been explored has been entrenched has been energized and then the spirit life when we give our life to christ the spirit life is is begging for expression and so the voice of the soul is louder than the perspective of the spirit that's our experience and that's why we need to pray so much to be filled with the spirit so that by the spirit we can be strengthened with might do you realize that when you stop praying you start becoming more fleshly because your spirit does not have strength for that battle between your flesh and your spirit hallelujah and when you stop depending on him naturally you begin to express the flesh because the implication of our coherent with him is that we need to depend on him for strength for supply if man had eaten of the tree of life he would have become an absolutely dependent being on god but he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the implication of that was that he became independent of god he could do his stuff without god and now in the new covenant he has given us salvation so we have eaten of the tree of life are you with me now but every day we need to reject the tree of knowledge and of good and evil because when things happen your soul comes up with a recipe of what you should do how you should go about the situation hallelujah and you need to deny that and choose the option that is being projected from your spirit and as you begin to do that consistently you begin to realize that your soul will begin to lose the ability to direct you and you believe in christ your life will be given expression to Christ. It will be given manifestation to Christ. More and more. And the things that you read about Christ in the Bible, you will have it as your own literal experience. Do you get it now? So the Bible reveals that we are dwelling in Him and He is what? Dwelling in Him. If Jesus could say, because I dwell in Him and He dwells in me, I speak his words are you with me oh i do his works it means that that he's dwelling in you and you in him you should be able to speak his words that means not your words have you ever been in a situation where you had a um you were not box stop you had to face somebody you did not know what to say and you didn't you were not planning to say anything but when you just got there utterance just came and those moments are wonderful moments because you just give expression to the utterances of god and then that mighty puzzle that you felt you could not handle by the operation of the wisdom of god that was revealed because you dependent on god you just spoke what god would have said if you were physically present but when you become say oh the last time i spoke well I spoke good and then a situation comes like that and then you want to use your wisdom you now create a problem that will linger in the family for the next five years the fact that it dwells in you is a proof that you are under the responsibility to speak his words and not just that to also do his works we don't have time to walk this thing 
Just rise up, let's pray and close for tonight. Let me have that. Jesus, thank you. Now, hallelujah. Tomorrow is Monday. Okay, we'll see how we'll do it so that I can start teaching from 3 o'clock. Amen. We need to cover ground. We need to cover some ground. 3 o'clock. No, from 4 o'clock, sorry. 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Begin to teach from 4 o'clock. When last did he speak through you? And you knew that this speaking was not a function of your effort. These were the very words of God. When last did he act through you? You know this was not your action. That if it were you, you would have slapped and fought. But somehow, you didn't seem to have the ability to slap. Something constrained you. That means he acted through you. That was the life that Jesus lived. He lived a life that was poised to give expression to the Father. I don't know how many Christians today really desire to give expression to the Father. Because many more times you express yourself, express your anger, express how you felt. You say, I just wanted him to know how I felt. And then you give expression to your flesh. And God was not within the context of what happened. Because at that point in time, you forgot that you were in a race. You forgot that other people have run before you. You forgot that everybody was watching you to see what you would do. And then you just, you could afford to slap. You could afford to express yourself instead of expressing God. When we look upon his life, his life begins to challenge our lives. And when we begin to, that challenge begins to register. We begin to see the need for us to yield more to him. Can we pray tonight? In the next two minutes. Can you express to him how you have mis misrepresented him? very largely and how you desperately need his grace for every single day to express Christ thank you father We want to express you that when men make contact with us they'll be making contact with you so that we'll have authority to say like you said if you have seen me you have seen the father that we should also have the same authority to say if you have seen me then you have seen Jesus for he's alive within me I speak his words I do his works. I carry his power. I carry his mandate. I carry his reality. My life is a conduit pipe that expresses him. God wants to take us higher.